Hello friends, press the subscribe button and hit the bell icon for more such easy videos. We are going to talk about spinal cord. Spinal cord is also known as myelon. Medulla oblongata of the brain is going to extend as the spinal cord. Whenever we talk about the length of spinal cord, it is 42 to 45 centimeter long. The thickness of spinal cord is 2 centimeter. In the spinal cord, when I draw, so this part what I'm drawing is the brain. And this brain is going to give you S shaped curve. And this S shaped curve basically is the spinal cord. So there are two curves basically that you're going to observe. The first curve is the cervical curve. And the second curve is the lumbar curve. The end of the spinal cord basically is known as conus medullaris. Spinal cord is soft, whitish, flattened cylindrical tube. It extends up to the second lumbar vertebrae. The end of the spinal cord is known as conus medullaris. And this conus medullaris gives rise to huge number of nerves basically and these nerves they appear like a horse tail so this conus medullaris producing huge number of nerves that look appears like horse tail but it is called as corda equina when i use this word corda corda means tail when i say equina it is horse so the horse tail like structure is seen so maximum number of nerves arises from the conus medullaris, the end part of the spinal cord. Spinal cord gives rise to 31 pairs of nerves. When I put it in number, it will be 8 cervical, 12 thoracic, 5 lumbar, 5 sacral and 1 coccyx. So these are the different nerves arising from the spinal cord. Let's look at the TS of the spinal cord, the transverse section of spinal cord, which is also known as histology of spinal cord. So if I cut the spinal cord to see what is present inside the spinal cord, for that, we need to draw the diagram of spinal cord. But for you to remember, remember spinal cord is the extension of medulla oblongata, 42 to 45 centimeter long, two centimeter thick, has two curves, cervical curve and the lumbar curve, appears S-shaped in structure. The end is known as conus medullaris, which gives rise to the horse tail-like structure. And this horse tail-like structure is known as corda equina. Now, what is present inside this spinal cord? So let's look at the histology, which is also known as TS. TS means transverse section of the spinal cord. So when we look at the spinal cord, it appears H-shaped. So if you take half apple, so somewhat like this appears the shape of the spinal cord. The meninges that are present in the brain, same meninges will be present in the spinal cord also. So let me first draw the diagram of the spinal cord. So this is the covering and it appears like half apple. So we can say spinal cord T as that is transverse section. Now these are nothing but the meninges that are present on the spinal cord which is also found in the brain. So the one which is attached to the spinal cord is called as pia matter. Above the pia matter what you will get is the arachnoid matter and above the arachnoid matter you will get the dura matter. So dura matter is the outermost meninges that is found in the spinal cord. Inner to that, there is a dura matter. Above dura matter, there will be space, and that space is called as epidural space. What we need to understand that this epidural space is not found in the brain. So meninges has dura matter, arachnoid matter, and the pia matter called as DAP. Above the dura matter space, called as epidural space. Below the dura matter, there is a space called as subdural space. Then there is arachnoidal, arachnoid matter. Below that, there is a space called as subarachnoidal space. And at the last, there is a pia matter. Now we need to draw the H-shaped structure. So this H-shaped structure is nothing but it is called as the cross-section of the spinal cord. 
Now, when you look at the structure, it is appearing somewhat H shaped. So here there will be two matter again present: the gray matter and the white matter. In brain, we have seen that outer was gray matter, the inner was white matter. But in spinal cord, the outer matter basically will be the white matter, and the inner matter will be the gray matter. So this gray, what I'm drawing, is the gray matter, and the white is considered as the white matter. These are the different space that we see: subarachnoidal space, subdural space, and these space they are occupied by special fluid that is called as CSF. So in this way, you can draw the diagram for TS of spinal cord. Let's understand the different parts of the spinal cord. So remember, spinal cord has a shallow dorsal fissure and a deep ventral fissure. So this fissure, what you can see here, it is deep. So it is called as a deep ventral fissure. All the spinal cord will have inner gray matter and there will be outer white matter so the white matter and the gray matter is separated and because of this h shaped gray matter what happens the spinal cord divides into three parts the upper part is known as dorsal funiculi the second one is known as lateral funiculi and the third one is known as ventral funiculi so these are different parts just because of the gray matter the next there is a dorsal lateral horn and this dorsal lateral horn below that there is a ventral lateral horn so how is the dorsal lateral horn we can say that the dorsal lateral horn is nothing but it is also known as ascending tract it is sensory in nature and it is responsible for conducting impulse to brain which impulse sensory impulse so all the sensory impulse will be transferred to the brain by the help of dorsolateral horn so what i can say dorsolateral horn ascending tract ventral lateral horn descending tract dorsolateral horn sensory in nature ventral lateral horn motor in nature dorsolateral horn will always conduct sensory impulse to brain and the ventral lateral horn conducts motor impulse to muscles and glands so this is dorsal and the ventrolateral horn after this we need to talk about the central cavity that is called as neuroceil this neuroceil is lined by specialized cell called as ependymal cell and these ependymal cells they are responsible for producing csf that is cerebro spinal fluid this is how your transverse section of spinal cord appears above the dura mater there is a space called as epidural space which is